evolved in a place that was never this perfect, gentle Eden, this paradise. I mean, Africa was not this gentle, giving mother. I crocodile! Discover crocodile! Crocodile! Do something! Well, move, I'm trying. Move! Move! Ah, that's it. Sometimes the oasis was wet and yeah. full of fish, but nature could be a bitch. When I did my game before Assassin's Creed or mm. Prince of Persia, it was a big adventure, epic, and, mm -hmm. and I said, okay, but I want to tell the story of the greatest adventure yeah. of all time. The greatest story ever told. Yeah. Ours. The thing for me as a filmmaker, I've worked in the same subject as you, uh, the thing that always strikes me is how unlikely our survival was. I mean, if you look at the world we lived in, um, it was never assured that we would make it. The beginning of your game, Volume 1 of Humankind Odyssey, really starts with the early ancestors. The very early ones. So before Homo sapiens, before Homo erectus, before Australopithecines, this is when we're just beginning to get out of the trees and up on our feet. Exactly. I'm starting uh, Ancestors 10 million years ago, yeah. and it's about the evolution through time yeah. and, and how climate changed so many times sure. and how many species tried yeah. and then didn't survive. I think that if you look at it in terms of human evolution, this is purely a stop on the way. We have not arrived at a destination. It's one oh, yeah, bus that's... stop on a journey that will never end. Yeah. We're used to living in a world where humans are unlike any other form of life. It wasn't very long ago that we lived in a kind of Middle Earth. You know, there were hobbits and Denisovans and Neanderthals and all kinds of uh, species of Homo erectus that we're just learning about now. The brilliant thing about a game like yours is it transports us back to a time when there was this incredible diversity of humans. And each one of these kinds of humans was just an experiment. And some of the experiments worked out, and some of them didn't. You need other members of a, of a clan Absolutely. around you to survive. It's not Definitely. true that you can do it by yourself. Even though you're the best runner of yeah. them all, yeah. Yeah. You, you need help. Yeah, I mean, one of the most important uh, advantages that our ancestors had, clearly, and it, 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 we don't really understand the pace of its evolution and when it becomes that advantage is the size of human communities and the ability to uh, be in contact with other human communities, to have some kind of a literally common language with mm -hmm, them. Mm -hmm. Because the larger the community, the more potential solutions there are to any problem. So you're creating the environment that your characters are going to be in. I mean, it's incredible to me because I just get in an airplane with a cameraman and I go there, yeah. I go to this place, I film it, there's my environment, but you have to build everything. Yes. Yeah. So we take pictures yeah. from people like you, yeah. who go there, yes. and then we recreate. What's interesting is it's, it's very realistic, so you're putting every discrete element in there, every blade of grass, every tree, every stone, you gotta drop it all in. Yeah, in fact, we, uh, we're doing a lot of research, finding references from the internet, movies, everything yeah. we can, books, yeah. and then we try to put as much as we can after that, we have the technology aspect of it that will force us to limit ourselves on the yeah. data we put on. So that's why it's important to choose the right amount of which one will be there that will pay a lot. My player is an Homo sapiens. Mm -hmm. And so he knows a lot more than the character he's playing. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, all the time I need to adjust what is possible in the game because the Homo sapiens with a controller mm -hmm. will have ideas mm -hmm. about, oh, can I do this? Uh, can I use this yeah. to survive? That's a gym. Yep. So it's basically a quick way for us to look mm -hmm. at every single item we have in the game. Okay. Nick and those guys will do the landscape, the visuals, mm -hmm. and then we start putting ingredients in there. I see. Um, yep. Most of the times, people will do the ingredients first, and then they'll put the art on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, because our subject matter is so organic, mm -hmm. we started the opposite way. So you, so you build the landscape? And then we start populating it with 
animals, yeah. uh, food, tools, gotcha. and, and start to create scenarios for that. Over two million years of human evolution, and when I say evolution, I mean we're changing all the time. Mm -hmm. We have a single tool, the hand axe, which is this big chunk of rock with a sharp end. Yeah. That's all we need for two million years. I mean, I've had my phone for a year and I feel like I need a new one, right? <laughs> See, I still have to look down. No, 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 no! Ah! Oh, that Jesus. is the end of Naobi right now. Okay. All right. Oh, poor you! This game, even in the development stage, puts you into a much richer world than I would have expected of a video game. Where it's not about killing the enemy, it's about dealing with all the opportunities and threats in a natural environment. Oh my god, this takes way more intelligence than, I mean, my uh, PhD at Cambridge did not prepare me for this.